Washington can be a cold, cruel city. One minute, this world is yours, the next, it's moving on without you. Barack Obama has three years left in the White House, but already everyone here is focused on who replaces him. This is Obama's house of cards, and if he wants to get anything big done with what remains of his presidency, he'll need to play a stronger hand. His approval ratings have sunk to the lowest ever. He's lost credibility around the world, and then there's his terrible relationship with a gridlocked Congress. Obama craves momentum, but his presidency seems stuck. So let's set party interests aside. At last year's State of the Union address, Obama promised action on three big issues, immigration, guns, and climate. As of today, there has been no legislation on any of them. He comes into the 2014 State of the Union in a much weaker political position than he was a year ago, and the things he had hoped to capitalize on that stronger political position a year ago have not happened. Inside the White House, they remain, of course, deliberately optimistic about the president's agenda. But sometimes you get a more so, honest take from someone who has left the administration. I think it's hard to uh, overestimate the real damage that was inflicted uh, for most of last year on health care. This was entirely in the control of the White House. Uh, and yet still so badly bungled. Where was the person in the White House going into the Oval Office and saying, Mr. President, this is not working out? The one thing I've always said is in, in, in my time in the White House, when it comes time to knock on that door and walk in that room and tell the president bad news, um, not as many people want to be in on that meeting. <laughs> the health care disaster blindsided the White House and it shows. There's an undeniable sense of stagnation in America at the moment, and the world is feeling it. Take the issue of social mobility. It's actually worse here than it is in most of Europe. And the gap between rich and poor is growing faster here than it is anywhere else. But this is the issue that President Obama hopes to use to give Democrats a rallying cry in the midterm elections and help reboot his presidency. It has become a common theme at the White House daily briefing. On income inequality, the president's repeatedly made it clear recently that this is going to be a big part of the next three years. But with so little appetite in Congress to do anything about it, how much effort's he going to put behind measures that can actually reduce the trend? Addressing that challenge, addressing that problem, making sure that there is opportunity for everyone uh, is something that we can do together with Congress. And it's also something that he can tackle using all of the tools in his toolbox as president of the United States. Clearly, Obama bears some responsibility for his shrunken presidency, and perhaps the only reason he isn't in worse shape is that his opponents are even more stuck. And we've been running on this idea that Obama's the boogeyman, his policies are bad for America, and yet we've put no alternative individual or policy that the American people could gravitate towards. What I'm hoping in this cycle, we see those leaders emerge that begin to push back on this, this, this noise inside the party. It has to happen, because if it doesn't happen, Caddy, 2016 will be a pipe dream. Barack Obama came into the White House thinking he could change the way American government works. Today, a more pragmatic president has to accept that just keeping government open may have to pass for success. The time for grand ideals is past.